Hello everybody, I'm John Bode for Kestrel Land Trust Learning with the Land. You can also check out my website, naturenerdsrule.com, where you can find some other information and some really great educational videos. Today, we're going to be looking at some introductions to tracking, okay? Um, especially in the winter or in mud. Um, you may have a backyard, you may go out hiking and see some things, and you might want to just start with what should I do? Well, the first thing you should do, and this is what I learned from my tracking teacher, Susan Morse, up in the wilds of Vermont, is always first look at your context. Where are you at, right? So right now, we're in the middle of the Mineral Hills Quarry. Um, so there's a lot of rocks and, and nooks and crannies and things like that, and for me, that's telling me probably porcupine, right? But if you also look around, this is a field, right? but it's going into early succession. There's sumac and there's so, so, a lot of shrubs and, and things growing up here. Um, off to the left, there's a whole stand of aspen that's starting to grow. Um, you might want to look at water features. Is there any water running through your backyard or where you're hiking, right? So over here, there's a real big pond that probably when it's not frozen, animals are moving to, right? Um, so you always want to get the context. So if you're in your backyard, what kind of trees are around? Um, what, what's the food source? Is there water? What are you connected to in terms of other, other conservation land? Things like that. You always want to get the context before you start looking at the actual tracks that are in the yard. Okay? So that's the, that's the first thing is context. Okay, so once you find tracks, like here's a couple of different tracks. One of them is moving through here, as you can see. And then you can't see it, and I'll take a picture of it, but there's a little wind running right through here. The, the first thing you want to do is dis discern what kind of animal it is. And there's four, four, four different types of tracks that you're looking at. Um, one is walkers, and they're your deer and your bobcat and coyote that basically walk like your feline or your or your dog at home, okay? Then there's the waddlers, and this is a waddler because they, they just sort of go like this. Maybe you can see their front feet and their back feet, front feet and back feet, and they just kind of waddle along. Then you have the hoppers, okay? And the hoppers, you sort of see two front feet, two back feet, and they hop. So you can see doot, 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 and that's the iconic rabbit track. Um, so they're the hoppers, and also this is a hopper. This is a little mouse just running across here hopping, okay? Um, and the other are bounders, and bounders are the river otter, maybe the fisher, ermine, mink, where they're bounding, and you can usually see three dots where they're bounding, and they're bounding, and they're bounding. Um, so walkers, waddlers, and then you have the um, bounders and the hoppers. Yeah. So once you figure that out, then you're you're in the you're in the realm of okay, now what what kind of um, what kind of waddler is this, right? Well, you have to go with the context. We're here with a lot of rocks, right? And there's a hemlock forest over there. Hmm. Maybe this waddler could be a porcupine. One of the things that I learned about porcupines is that they're really almost blind. And so they follow the same trail back and forth, back and forth from their dens, right? All the way up to the hemlock forest and back. That way they don't have to worry about getting lost because they go from their dens all the way up and over to the hemlock forest on the other side of this knob. So this is a waddler. This is how you can see they just waddle, waddle back and forth, back and forth. They're not going totally. And all the way down the hill to guess where? Hemlock forest.
Then, if you really want to get specific, then you can start measuring. Oh boy. Um, and you can look at the straddle, which is the distance between the two middle points of their, of their tracks. Or you can look at the, um, <laughs> the stride. And the stride is where the middle of one to the middle of the other. So you can start measuring. And there's all sorts of, of books that, that you, can, you can get. One of the major books that I just love, let me get it out here. Um, one of the books that I really love is Animal Tracks. I'll give you a picture of it. Um, Sheldon, Hartson, and Elbrook. And it's just this wonderful little book that gives you all sorts of information, including the straddles and the strides and everything else. Um, but I usually don't do that because I, I just don't want to get too, too detail oriented with it. Um, I remember when I was out tracking with Susan Morse, when we were learning, we were out as a major group and it was, oh God, we were out in the middle of nowhere in Vermont, you know, miles away from anything. It was like 4.30 in the middle of the winter. It was getting dark and it was starting to snow. And we come upon this big log with tracks around it. Well, the real heavy duty um, trackers, they got down on their hands and knees and they were measuring and the, no, this is four centimeters. No, it's five centimeters. Oh, and it's this and, and they were arguing and arguing. And I'm standing there going, we gotta get in here. You know, that primal fear that, oh my God, we're gonna get lost out here in the middle of nowhere. Even though I knew that Susan Morse knew what she was doing. There's that primal fear of it's getting dark and it's snowing and I have no idea where I'm at. Finally, finally, they came to a consensus. Not a, it was a majority, but not all of them, that it was a star-nosed mole. And I was like, thank God, let's go, okay? <laughs> so, um, so we got back, as you can see, we got back in one piece and I'm still surviving. So, But I, I don't do that measuring as much as other people. Um, because one of the things that you'll realize, like with walkers, you know, when you see um, um, dog tracks, um, you know, you may have a fox that's really big and so you're thinking oh this is a coyote or you might have a smaller coyote thinking oh this is a fox and so they they overlap in so many ways that once you once you start to see tracks you'll start to get a sense of possibly you know what this could be in some ways because of the context because of how they're how they're moving striding right and also because of the size of their stride a little bit their straddle and also then the track itself and that's what we're going to look at as well, okay? So this is a hopper. You can see it's hopping, 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 hopping. Right past Maryland and hop all the way to the tree. And then up the tree. So chances are it's a squirrel. It's a big enough track for a squirrel. So you go, so they're like this? Yeah, so your, your hind feet have landed and you push off with your hind feet and you leap forward onto your front. Okay. Leap. Leap onto my front? Yeah. Like that? <laughs> yeah, but instead of your hind feet landing where they are, your hind, your hind feet swing around and oh, land in the snow in front of... Oh, here. Yeah. Oh, no wonder you threw out your back. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna try it either. <laughs>
So here, we just found a crossing of a walker. One, two, three, one, two, three. Now, one of the things that you'll find with wild animals um, is that first of all, they move in a straight line. Okay, the domestic dog, when you see them out, they're going from tree to tree. My dog loves going from tree to tree to every, every, everywhere else because my dog knows that he's going to get dinner tonight. But a wild animal doesn't, so they have to really conserve their energy. So just as the porcupine moves through the same, the same crevice, basically, right, to and from the, from the hemlock grove, um, partly because they're blind, but partly because they want to conserve energy. Why keep pushing through heavy snow if you've already created that, right? Um, with these guys, they also call what's direct register, which means that once their, their front foot leaves and their back foot comes in, their back foot goes into that hole. And so you'll see a lot of bobcat, um, coyote, fox, they will be direct registering, okay? So this is a walker. Um, just from the size of it, um, you know that it's gonna be a pretty big animal. Now, here's how you can tell the difference between a canine and a feline. And this is really something wonderful that, that uh, Susan Morse came up with. The canine, they have symmetrical toes, front pads and back pads. And when they go into snow or mud, the negative space between those pads make an X, okay? So the mnemonic that Susan Morse came up with was X marks the spot, and spot marks the X, okay? So always remember that. Now also, when you look down into this, this, this track, now we're getting into the track itself, you can see that the, the pads are symmetrical, so that, that pretty much means that it's a, um, it's a canine, and there's two dots up at the top where the claws are. Dogs cannot pull their claws in, okay? And so if you see X marks the spot with two dots up front, that's gonna be a canine. Now, just looking at this, you can't really tell whether it's a fox or a coyote, right? It is a wild animal because it's going straight on through up over the water and straight on back. It's not going from tree to tree, smelling what, you know, what's going on, okay? So um, just from the size of this, it looks like it's probably a coyote. And Marilyn kind of agrees that it's probably a, a coyote. So um, we're gonna go with coyote, okay? Um, and they move through. Now, the, the way to tell a feline is that they actually have asymmetrical pads, okay? So their, their pads actually look more like our hands. And the mnemonic that, that Susan Morse came up with, and, and you cat no lovers know that, is that um, they're always shooting near the finger because they always have a middle finger just like us, okay? So it's asymmetrical and there's a middle finger. Um, the cat's shooting you the middle, middle finger. So that's Susan Morse's other mnemonic for, to tell the difference. X marks the spot and cats are always shooting the finger at you all the time. So this is just really incredible. See, there's a coyote coming in from this wetland down below. It's moving through and it intersects with our bobcat track. And so you can see that on the left is the coyote with the X marks the spot. And on the right is the bobcat track, catitude with the asymmetric front toes. And then the bobcat heads over to pee on the stump, just to mark her territory. Incredible. Look at that. Amazing. There's your comparison.
So that's sort of introduction to tracking. Um, remember, first context, like right now we are in the hemlock forest where the porcupines come down and crawl up and eat and, and do nip twigs, the little twigs that are over and around. You can check out my website, Nature Nerds Rule, and uh, there's a whole video on the wild world of porcupines and also bobcat and rattlesnakes and all sorts of good stuff. So first, you wanna get the context. Then you wanna to try to get, see what it's doing. Is it bounding? Is it walking? Um, is it hopping? So that's, that's what you wanna be looking at for, for just sort of the, the overall tracks. Then you can start looking at tracks, and I love this. This is um, something that I got at keepingtrack.com and it shows a realistic size of each of the tracks, which is wonderful. So I'll take this out with me a lot of times and compare it. Um, the other thing that I want to show you that are resources, the first book is Tracking in the Art of Seeing by Paul Resendez. He's sort of the guru of, of animal tracking. So this is, this is one book that you want for your library. And then the other one that you want to just carry around with you, like I said, is The Animal Tracks of New England by Sheldon Hartson and Elbrook. I carry this wherever I go so that I can go, oh, oh, that's what it is. Um, so, well, Marilyn and I hope you enjoyed our little tracking introduction and uh, see you out on the trail.